Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Stuart Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. You know, as, as we explore uh, cloud data centers and hyperscalers, one of the things that these uh, large environments run into is what we call uh, flash read latency outliers. Joining me on the light board to discuss this is Joel Dietrich. Joel is with Toshiba Memory. Joel, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Jordan. So let's talk about this uh, uh, flash read latency outlier. What are we talking about here? Well, an outlier is a rare event. It's right. a black swan, something that happens uh, very rarely. Um, this is a peculiarity of flash physics. It's something that uh, um, happens because um, when you write to a flash die, it's uh, like some of us can only do one thing at a time. Yeah, that's and me. when it's busy writing, uh, it can't be read. And so any data that's on the same die that's being uh, written is unavailable for reads. And so, so it's the uh, ultimate single tasker. It's a single threaded device. Okay. That's exactly right. So what's the impact of that look like? If you draw a probability distribution of latency and say this is one millisecond, two, four, eight, and this is probability, if we were on a high drive, we would see a very uniform distribution. It takes uh, eight plus milliseconds for the disk to spin around and depending on where the data is, uh, that's how long it takes. For flash, you get something that looks like this. Wow, okay. Almost all of the accesses are in the 100 to 200 microsecond range, very, mm -hmm. very fast. And there's a small percentage of them out here that are three milliseconds plus. Okay. And so um, you may ask, well, who cares? Yeah, why, yeah, why, yeah. why does that bother me? Right. Um, and, and, and it's a very good question. Um, in the um, In the legacy enterprise, most software applications, if I need to do a thousand things, the flow diagram looks like this. Loop a thousand times around that loop and however long this is, you multiply by a thousand and that's how long the, 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 the uh, application ran. Sure. Um, if that's your, your flow diagram, you don't care about outliers, you care about the average sure, latency, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, your, it's going to be a uh, thousand times the average. This isn't how we do things in the cloud, however. In the cloud, the requirements are different. Uh, we need uh, constant performance at infinite scale, and okay. we're willing to throw hardware at the problem. Right. And so the diagram looks more like this. We would fan the job out to many workers, and then fan the results back in. And so, for example, um, if this is a Google web search, there might be 25,000 machines involved in your web search. Um, the interesting thing about this is, the performance you see is dependent on the longest of those paths, not the average of them. Okay. Okay, so now we really care about... Right, so uh, this guy becomes a problem. This guy becomes the performance driver rather yeah. than, uh -huh. than the average. So this group of customers, this group of people, is really focused on this uh, aspect. And as more and more and more software is written with this paradigm, it becomes more and more important. So yeah, it just becomes a, gr a growing thing that people need to be aware of. And, and I would assume it's not something you run into until you hit that type of scale, right? That's right. You, um, unless your applications are structured in this way, unless they're a map reduce or a scatter gather sort of uh, architecture, you wouldn't see this at all. Um, if they are, you care about this a lot. And it's a, it's a characteristic flash, as I said, that, that is uh, not something we can get around. You can um, understand and predict how big a problem it's going to be um, by, by thinking about how many die, how many flash chips are in your SSD. Okay. So a flash chip these days is typically 32 gigabytes per die. Okay. So there's 32 of them per terabyte. Right. And each one of those flash chips, if you're writing it as fast as it can go, can do maybe um, 32 megabytes per second. Okay. So the, the math is kind of convenient. 32 chips gets you a terabyte, and it gets you a gigabyte per second of write capacity. And um, the the probability that you're going to hit a die that's busy is just um, the, your, um, your write rate divided by um, one gigabyte per second per terabyte of capacity. Okay. And so, for, so that's your overall probability. That's the overall probability. And so if you're, if you're writing at, at uh, uh, 10 megabytes per second, then a tenth of a percent, or one percent of the time, you're going to get this kind of a, a read latency. So I, I guess the big question is, what do we do about it? What can we do about it? It's a tough problem to solve, and um, some work on this has been done in the NVMe standards uh, committees, but the solution is incomplete. It needs a little help from the host, so let me explain how that works. Imagine we could divide our storage into two pieces, and think of this as uh, 
as RAID 1 or replication or something. So writes are going to go both places. Okay. And we can read from either. Okay. So what we know here is we need to be able to read from a drive or a portion of a drive that isn't undergoing write traffic, and then we can remove all of the uh -huh. outliers. So how can we do that? Well, suppose we buffer the writes to this drive, put them in a, in a temporary cache, and use it to read. Okay. This one is, is writing uh, at full rate, and then when this cache fills up, we swap, and we begin to buffer over here, and give this one an opportunity to catch up, to get the, get the data written that was, that was buffered. Now we're continuously reading from a drive that has no write traffic at all. Oh, okay. uh, so, so this is the, uh, the general solution. Uh, these subsections of the drives are called sets in NVMe terminology, NVMe sets. Okay. Um, this kind of software, however, um, doesn't come in, uh, in, in every storage system in the world, and so you know, there's, this is a, a relatively new thing. Our Kumoscale uh, shared accelerated storage product will have this kind of capability, and will do this and many other sort of nitty-gritty media management tasks that really make the overall solution work better, but they're, um, uh, they're, they're have been up till now mainly of interest to flash geeks and not to people who care about storage. Right. So this is the kind of thing you're going to see um, enclosed in the Kumo scale system. Well, and I, and I think you know it's probably one of those things that until you have this type of architecture, you're, you're you know uh, gloriously oblivious. Yeah, to the you're blindly unaware. You don't care about this, um, yeah. and then all of a sudden you say, "Wow, this very fast flash is not." coming out to be all that fast, what's going on here? Well, and I have to assume that troubleshooting this, if you don't know to look for it, is because you have no really idea tough. what's causing it, right? Exactly so, oh, that's exactly so. So this buffering technology, that's something that you guys are planning to put into the Kuma Scale product? It's in our roadmap, yes. That and, uh, and as I said, a number of other things that are analogous there. Um, um, things you can do in managing the application of data to the media that really makes the solution work a lot better. Okay. Um, and this is, we do this every day inside the drives and now we're doing it across drives at a little higher level. Great, all right, well thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Well there you have it, if you're, you're looking for these sort of uh, flash read uh, latency outliers, th this is a really good example and it's something that if maybe you've been struggling with this and you didn't know what it was, this is probably what could be the problem if you're in this type of an architecture. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.